Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to a very different one. So today is a really big day. Um, I am in Manchester right now and I'm in Manchester, this apartment, which is the apartment that I started renting this time last year. Uh, I'm in it for the last time. And if you maybe are a new viewer in the last couple of weeks or last couple of months, by the way, please excuse. Yeah, it's been a long day of, <laughs> of moving out. <laughs> If you don't know, I moved to Manchester last last September, and the reason for that was because a lot was happening in the online world, and my address had been posted in Brighton um, by, shout out to the Clean Ballinger fans, um, they had posted my address, and I needed to get out of my apartment, just out of my own, you know, feeling like I needed to get out of it, I felt like it was a huge invasion of privacy and I just didn't feel safe anymore, whether or not anything would happen, but having wellness checks because your address has been online and people are calling up, like, I'm not going to rehash all that, but it was a bad time and it was a very, very, very stressful time. And this time last year, I was definitely in a worse mental place than what I'm in this year. So would be for progress, right? So I started to associate everything in my life with needing change this time last year. It was a lot that was going on with the Colleen situation and every day online was intense and I just felt like I needed to escape my reality in a sense. And for me, that looked like thinking that I needed to get out of Brighton. And so I had lived in Brighton. I moved there when I was 18. I lived there 18, 19, 20 and moved out on my 21st birthday. Um, I'm about to turn 22 next week and I'm going to be in LA for my birthday. I'm very excited. Um, I just felt like I needed to get out of Brighton. Like I felt, I felt like I just needed this change and I decided to move to Manchester. It, you know, in my head was completely you know, Brighton's down south, Manchester's up north. It was really far away from Brighton and I just felt like I needed to get out of Brighton. Again, I can't even begin to fathom what my mental state was this time last year that it provoked me to make such a big change in my life. I was going through a lot and anyways, ultimately I did it and I moved into this apartment. You know, I moved into this apartment I think the first week of October. So I'm moving out a little bit early um, because I'm going to be in LA next week um, on my move out date. So I moved into this apartment and a lot of really big things happened in my life during that time period. And I, I'm walking through this apartment. I'll give you a little tour. I'm walking through this apartment for the last time and there are just floods of memories. And I had a little bit of a cry this morning, <laughs> as embarrassing as that is to admit, because... I just was kind of transported back to how I felt last year, you know, seeing the apartment so fresh. I'm going to give you a little apartment tour and then we'll like talk. So you walk in right here and this is like cupboards and stuff. This is the first bathroom. I have my little powder right here for my oily little face. <laughs> first bathroom. And then this was my bedroom. So if you ever watched any of my videos when I lived in Manchester, I had my desk right here. So the background was this. Obviously, I'm bringing these down to Brighton. Little view from the bedroom. Obviously, this is so different than any view in Brighton because Brighton is like a seaside town. So this was my lovely little comfortable bed. And this was the other bathroom. Very similar to the other one. This was... The second bedroom, right here. And then this was the main living space. I loved this sofa. Oh my God, this is the most comfortable sofa in the entire world. And anyway, so this is this, very windowed, very beautiful table. I always loved this table. I loved this kitchen. I loved it. I loved this fridge. I loved, I loved everything about how this apartment looked and obviously here is the balcony right here i'm not going to go out because it is so rainy right now but you can see the balcony and then it's the apartment's in the city center so you can see city center and 
I am, um, let me close this right here. I am the top floor. So there's 20 floors to this place and I'm the 20th floor, um, which is very high up. I'm very different to my previous apartment in Brighton. I was very low dying. Um, but anyways, I have just been thinking about the last year. So whenever I moved to Manchester, I very quickly realized that I made a big mistake. And it was, quite honestly, I think one of the most impactful decisions I made in my life because it was such a mistake, but it really made me reevaluate my entire fucking life. I moved here and a lot of knock on things happened. So when I first moved up here, um, I realized that I was in a new city, which sounds stupid, and I was having a really hard time meeting new people. And so I basically lived in Manchester with no friends, really. Um, I had a couple people who I knew that used to live in Brighton that lived up here, but they lived together and had their own little circle. And I definitely was on my own in this city and I really didn't have anyone. And that really started to fuck with me. And then my kitty Milo, who, It's really weird because even though it is almost a year since I lost Milo, uh, it is, oh, and I don't want to get upset, but it is still one of the hardest things to think of. Um, oh my God, Milo um, was my little kitty and I had a really bad year last year. Um, I don't mean to be saying so doom and gloom, but... In January, I had to put my cat, uh, Tyler, down of January of last year because he got FIP, which is a disease that cats can get, and it was just killing him. And the vet ultimately had, you know, made that decision. And I lost Tyler, who was my first ever kitty. My first, I got him the, the day I moved to Brighton when I was 18, and we had been through so much together. And he was my entire world. Um, I lost him in January. And then I had Milo. And I also had a cat, Gomez, within that time. And Gomez ultimately had to be rehomed because he kept fighting with Milo and Tyler. And when Tyler died, um, the dynamic changed in the cats. And whereas Tyler used to be the top dog, Gomez wanted to be the top dog. He was a rag doll. And he started attacking Milo. And ultimately, he was separated for a few weeks, few months, and then he had to be rehomed. And then it was just me and Milo. And obviously, I had Bonnie and Dolly, uh, my two dogs. But it was it was me and Milo. And it... He... Oh... Sorry, I think I'm doing this as like a therapeutic thing as well to like say goodbye to like this era of my life. Oh my God, I don't know why I'm getting so sad. Um, give me a moment. I, you know, I put in such an effort to making sure that if I was gonna do this move, that Milo was gonna be as safe and comfortable as possible. And so, oh, fuck me. Um, I have to get a train to Brighton in like an, fucking 30 minutes. Um, so Milo, oh, fuck me, um, was just the best cat. And um, throughout the entire move, I was making sure that he was as comfortable as possible. And on the day of the move, um, he, and so a couple of weeks before we moved, I got Milo neutered and I had vlogged all this and stuff. And I still have a suspicion that something went wrong during that surgery that I wasn't told about because ultimately after that surgery, Milo kind of changed a little bit and he was very lethargic and very, you know, slow and he was gaining a lot of weight and I just didn't know what was happening. And anyways, we did the move and I had a mover, huge truck, brought all my stuff in Brighton and Milo sat in the front seat with me and the driver, and when we moved, he, um, oh, um, I was, he was 
such an adventurous cat and I was so excited for him to experience somewhere new and when oh my god sorry again I feel like I'm selfishly doing this so I can like kind of document and like feel like I'm talking to someone and saying goodbye to this era um but so whenever I the move-in day I remember just opening the little item in a little carrier and he went around everywhere went around everywhere and I set up cat trees for him and there's one right there and there was another one like right over there and he just loved it and he would walk up and down the apartment and it was just all so new for him he used to hide under here he used to sit on here and I think one of the devastating parts about this is he used to have an imprint here and the imprint is now gone uh oh my god um it literally looked like that um this was his little spot. When I would sit here, he would sit there. And it's hard because this apartment is my last memory of Milo. And I'm gonna be walking away from it. And while I'm not sad to walk away from the apartment, I just feel like I'm leaving behind my last memories of Milo and I would do absolutely anything in the world to have him have him back and just walking away from this apartment is, you know, it, it's emotional for a lot of different reasons. Milo being the main one, but another one being I just mentally go back to that time period in my life of last year and how stressful of a year it was. And um, there, there just were, was so many things that happened to me and... After that happened with Milo, I mean, I was just miserable, like absolutely miserable in this apartment. And that was a big reason for it. And um, and then a couple weeks after I lost Milo, um, I remember I had started going to this bar and um, I met someone in the bar and we had a really, really, really brief, um, really, really, really brief, like, um, kind of relationship. And it was my first ever time having a relationship. And by the way, relationship, I'm using that very vague, um, you know, we were exclusive to each other and stuff like that, but it was more than I'd ever been with anyone in the past. Right. Um, and so that went on for like, literally like a month and a half or something. Like it wasn't that, that long the time maybe two months max or something right but I really clinged on to that because I was so miserable and ultimately that didn't work out and then that was just a huge hit as well um because I ultimately thought it was something that I really wanted and obviously it wasn't I was just clinging on to anything and any form of company and support um so a lot of those memories you know are flashing back whenever I'm like in this apartment and I'm like thinking back on those things as well and I don't necessarily know how I feel about those um and so there was just a lot of like negative things that happened to me in in like the Manchester era and it's one that I'm definitely like ready to move on from and obviously um I started renting this apartment in October and I started renting an, an, a new apartment in Brighton in March, I think, um, because it was either I moved back to Brighton or I moved home. And I was in a year contract here and I couldn't get out of the contract at all. So I've ultimately had to like continue paying the entire year, even though I really wasn't living here at all, um, which was a huge hit and really unfortunate. But I think at a certain stage it was like I would rather work a little bit harder and be able to afford renting here and somewhere else or renting here and living at home rather than like being absolutely miserable and that was just how I felt here and it sounds so dramatic and it sounds so out of touch and it sounds so stupid where it's like but I cannot describe to you how sad and lonely I felt living here and you know I'm so grateful that I was able to sort something out with Brighton 
and, you know, be able to, like, live somewhere else. And I think the good thing about this is it taught me to be so appreciative of things when I have them and not always look for what's next. And what I mean by that is, like, um, when I lived in Brighton and, and I got doxxed and there was fucking wellness checks because people were calling up and they had my address and all this bullshit... I wanted to escape that so bad and that was clouding my mind and I didn't realize how much I loved Brighton and how much all my friends are there and all that because I was so panicking and so moving to Bre or Manchester and all this sag of events happening has made me realize how good I had it in Brighton and how grateful I am to be able to move back to Brighton and and now I really do I don't even know why I'm gonna cry when I say that um now I've learned to really appreciate what I have and I really love my friends and I really love my new apartment and I really love the fact that me and the dogs can go to the beach every day and, you know, I can walk them in the street and, like, I, I know my surroundings and I'm just, I'm so grateful to be back. And this, like, I'm going to get so made fun of for this, but I don't care because it's genuinely how I feel. You all know that YouTube is what I do for a job. And... I was able to afford renting in Manchester because of YouTube and I was also able to afford moving back to Brighton because of my YouTube videos and I was in such a bad place when I lived here, like so bad, that like people watching my videos and people supporting me, like you were the reason I was able to get out of that. So as cliche and how the comments are going to be that I'm being manipulative and all like this. I'm very aware of how this goes, specifically if you're fucking mess when you're saying it, but like I genuinely mean it that like watching my videos and supporting me was able to get me out of such a bad mental part of my life that had a lot to do with the city I was living in. So thank you. Um, it's weird. I mean, I always struggle to leave somewhere. Heck, I struggle to leave hotel rooms. Like I, I will... I will be, I'll get sad leaving hotel rooms and apartments are a completely different thing for me. I was a mess, you know, moving from Brighton uh, because, sorry, this is so gross. I was a mess moving from Brighton because I was walking away from so much and I ultimately knew I was making a mistake, but I was so stressed and panicking. And then here, you know, it's different. It's not that I'm sad to walk away from the apartment that I want to stay here for longer, but it's just a mixture of emotions. It's it's just a weird feeling. Um, I've I've experienced this feeling twice now with moving apartments twice, and I'm just so grateful that I'm back in Brighton, and I'm grateful that this chapter is coming to a close. And ultimately, I've learned so much living here, and and I'm grateful for that. Um, and I really just wanted to film right now to kind of have a moment where if I did this, then I. I don't have anyone here right now that I could like sit down and talk to and kind of express myself before I hand the keys back. But anyways, that is the Manchester era over. Um, we are done, over and out. I have a lot of memories here. I'll, you know, some good ones, some bad ones. That ultimately, they've kind of led me to where I'm at now. I cannot believe that I have to go down to the reception right now with my teary eyes and do a checkout report and then get on a train back to Brighton. I am going to look crazy. <laughs> um, well, that's the end of the Manchester era. I'm gonna head back to Brighton and film some videos tonight and get them up for you. But I do just wanna say that, um, thank you for not only changing my life in so many aspects by watching my videos and supporting me, but allowing me when I make stupid mistakes to be able to fix them. So I'm gonna love and leave you. I'm sorry if anyone has watched this, but I feel like I needed to do this for me. So we'll see you in my next one and goodbye.